Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to AS Level Chemistry. Today, we'll be doing organic chemistry for AS Level. And let's get started. Okay, let's look at some nomenclature. Structural formula is a formula that tells us the atoms bonded to each carbon atom. An example is as such. Basically, each uh, bonded, each atom bonded to higher carbon is uh, showcased with subscript. So CH2 and CH2 in this case. Next up, we have display formula, which shows all the bonds within the molecule. So in this case, we have ethene. So the double bond is shown and a single bond with hydrogen is shown. And in this case, the ester linkage is shown as such. And so are the single bonds with over here, over here, over here, over here. So everything is shown. Next up, we have the skeletal formula. It's a simplified version of the displayed formula and has symbols for carbons and hydrogen removed. For pro like you can take an example as propene. Basically, only the car carbon skeleton is shown and nothing else. There's no bonds between hydrogen. We just know there's three, three hydrogens over here. Um, two, one hydrogen over here and two hydrogens over here, but they're not shown. Um, however, bonds between carbon and other elements such as oxygen, halides and other elements are shown as such in two chlorobutane. We have the four carbon skeleton and one chlorine molecule, which is shown by the bond over here. Next up, just take note of the prefixes. Uh, for example, methane has one carbon. Ethene in this case has two carbon. Propene has three carbon, butane or in this case has four carbon, pentane and hexane have five carbon and six carbon respectively. Next up, uh, functional groups is an atom or a group of atoms in an organic molecule that determines the characteristics and the reactions of a homologous series. Okay, so um, and homologous series uh, compound to the same functional group and are separated by a CH2 unit. So um, as, I, as I said over here, this is um, the double bond over here is a is the functional group or the structure that is characterized by the functional group. So halogen or alkanes have a X, which is uh, denoted by a halogen. And these are the general formula for all these functional groups. And what I mean by is separated by a CH2 unit, I'm not saying that each and every, for it to take place, it must be only separated by one CH2 unit. In fact, it can be a multiple of CH2 units. So for example, methane is one carbon, um, and then we have pro propane, which is three carbons. So that's separated by two CH2 units. So that's uh, one example. Um, okay, so just take note of the structures and the functional groups. So uh, for AS, you don't need to know arenes and nitriles, as, I mean, arenes and amines as much. They come out in A2, aldehydes, ketones, nitriles, carboxylic acids, alcohols, halogenoalkanes, alkenes, and alkenes are required for AS. So for alkenes, it's characterized by carbon-carbon double bond. For halogenoalkene, it's characterized by CX bond, where X can be a halogen. Um, for alcohols, it's uh, characterized by an OH group or a hydroxyl group. For carboxylic acid, it's char characterized by C double bond O, OH group or a carboxyl group. Amines are NH2. Nitriles are by C triple bond N. Remember to show the triple bond whenever, whenever you're drawing for nitriles. Even for carboxylic acids, you should showcase uh, either, either such as either a COOH or C double bond OH. Uh, Arenes are aromatic uh, carbons and they're usually characterized by being attached to a benzene ring, which is a six carbon ring as such. Um, aldehydes are shown as CHO or C double bond OH and ketones are, are characterized basically by the C double bond O. And the C double bond O, oh, sorry, C double bond O is also characterized by, is also characterizes carb carbonyl groups. So let's go, let's move on to naming uh, hydrogen hydrocarbons. So these are the rules that you need to follow. First thing you need to do is uh, number the carbons with the side that produces the smallest number. Second thing, identify the branched groups. And, and a, a, a trick to this is to find the main chain, which is usually the longest. Sorry, and uh, forms the, the least number of branches. So um, the second next thing we have is a bunch of similar branches or side chains with prefixes such as di for two, tri for three, tetra for four. The side groups are named in alphabetical order. If there are different side chains, then they'll be in alphabetical order. And dashes are between number and word and in between different chains, side chains. Okay, let's look at some examples to understand this better. In this case, the correct naming scheme is 2-methylpentane. Again, uh, it's two because you, like I said, you pick, you start with the side that produces the least number of, uh, least number, which is in this case two. 
So if you start from this side, it's one, two. As compared to this side, it's one, two, three, four. So you take two. And the long and the main chain is usually the longest chain. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, five pentane instead of one, two, three, which is meat uh, propane. Um, so that's the naming convention for this. Um, for this one, we have three methyl groups that are similar. So that's why it's trimethyl. Again, the main chain is five carbon long, five carbons long. One, two, three, four, five. So pentane. And the two, two, three showcase the location. Again, you don't start from this side because it'll be one, two, three, four, which is much larger than one, two, three. So in this case, there's one, two methyl groups on carbon two, so it's two, two. And then there's another methyl group on carbon three, so it's three. And remember, there's a dash between, the dash is only between numbers and words. So it won't be between two dash, two dash, two dash. That's wrong. It's two comma, two comma, three dash, three methyl pentane. Okay, so in this case, we have a different side chains. We have a methyl and an ethyl. Again, ethyl is put up, put ahead first because of the alphabetical order. E comes before M. So it'll be three ethyl, two methyl pentane. The main chain hasn't changed. It's still five carbons long, hence it's pentane. Uh, we start from this side because the chain, will, the numbers will be smaller as compared to starting from this side. So we have one, two, three, three ethyl dash. Like I said, there's always a dash between a number and a word. So it's, 3 dash ethyl dash 2 dash methyl pentane. Next up, we have an example that I came up with. So just for, just for us to completely understand what we have learned, uh, let's look at how you can name this molecule. Uh, so we have, if you, if you assume this is the main chain, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's 5 carbons long, so hence it's pentane. It has two side chains, uh, a methyl and the ethyl over here. However, no matter where you start from, it'll be one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. However, since ethyl is alphabetically, since E is ahead of M in the alphabetical order, it's two dash ethyl dash four dash methyl pentane. That's one way to name this. However, this is not correct because if you look at if you look at this one, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's hexane. So we already made it already made a mistake. We didn't take the longest main chain so this is more correct because it takes the longest main chain and it, and it has it, it forms two simpler side chains as compared to this you have one ethyl and one methyl in this case you have two methyl groups so it's two four dimethyl x hexane and you start counting from this side because the number will be smaller so that uh, encompasses everything that we covered in naming of branch hydrocarbons so please just take note of that Let's move on to isomerism. Uh, so we have structural isomerism. Basically, it's the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. That's the definition. We have three types, position isomerism, functional group isomer isomerism, and chain isomerism. Uh, position isomerism is a position of atoms and bonded changes. And you need to watch out for symmetry and arrangement. So in this case, uh, bromine is attached to the first carbon over here. It's the same as this one. Because bromine, can, uh, because carbon, carbons that have single bonds can undergo a free rotation. So it, bromine being bonded over here, over here, or over here doesn't really make a difference. It's the same molecule. If you notice, in this case, the molecule is the exact same, except it's drawn differently. And just because it's drawn differently doesn't really mean the arrangement is different. Um, so the real isomer, isomers or position isomers are over here. Uh, the, the bromine over here is bonded across carbon one and carbon two, as compared to both the bromines being bonded to carbon one. Uh, no matter how many arrangements or changes or variations you bring in this molecule, you'll never produce this, hence it's a positional isomer. However, if the if this bromine was over here instead of, and this H was over here, it's not an isomer because this molecule can be flipped by 180 degrees and you'll produce the molecule that I just described. Next up, we have functional group isomers. Basically, different functional groups are formed with the same molecular formula. Uh, one example is carboxylic acids and esters. It can also be carboxylic acids and ketones and alcohols. Carboxylic acids broken up into uh, aldehydes and alcohols. So you just need to look out for that. But usually when they test in exams, it's uh, a carboxylic acid and ester functional group isomerism. Next up, we have chain isomerism, which is the branching of hydrogen. Um, so we need to use, uh, I'll be using a previous example of 2,4-dimethyl hexane in this case. So this is a perfect chain isomerism example. Um, 
I mean, not exactly a perfect example, but a big, but you can just take note that like, the number of side chains have changed. Like in in this case, it's a uh, pentane and hexane. The side chain is uh, two methyl, and in this case, it's one ethyl and one methyl. So hence, it's not the same molecule. I mean, it is the same molecule, but just for reference, for this example, this is this example. Just assume that. Um, the, the, just assume that well that the main chain has changed. Okay, so a tip for this is to shorten the main chain first, then rearrange the branches. So if you were to break this further, break this down uh, any more, it could be this can be broken down into five and then maybe four, and then you change the remaining side chains and arrange them accordingly. Okay, stereoisomerism. Basically, the definition is compounds are the same structural formula. The bonds do not change. Um, that's what you need to take note of. But the diff but they have different spatial arrangement. Uh, a good example for this is cis trans isomerism. There's no free rotation about a carbon carbon double bond because of the overlap between the sig uh, sigma sorry overlap between the pi bonds. So they can either produce uh, the these three. Um, and there's no way for the molecule to flip to reach the other isometric state. Um, so a quick note for this is you need to make sure that there's a uh, need to take note there's a polarity difference. If these are electronegative compounds, then the polarity will be different. So you just need to take note of that. Uh, it'll be X, Y, Y, X, or Y, X, Y, X. So you just need to take note of that. They'll be different and they cannot be reformed in any arrangement. Um, optical isomerisms have a chiral center. Basically, it's a carbon bonded with uh, carbon with four single bonds with different groups or atoms. Um, it's not they produce non superimposable images, and this affects polarized light. You don't need to know too much in detail about this except these two points, and 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 for and just you can you can you can just say it's characterized by a chir chiral center. You don't need to explain its uh, four single bonds unless uh, the question asks you. It's displayed as such. Um, this is.